It's a brand new day for LEGO Harry Potter as we've gotten the first two sets that are part of the supposedly most detailed Hogwarts castle yet. Like previous years, a bunch of these sets combined will create a massive Hogwarts castle and this is supposed to be the most ambitious one. I myself never really got into LEGO Harry Potter but I thought this might be the perfect time. Today we're looking at the first two sets in this series, the Owlery and the Boathouse. This video is not sponsored by LEGO, all opinions are my own. Now let's dive in into it. Both boxes come with the recognizable Harry Potter box art and both are surprisingly small given the sizes of the final built sets. The back sides are rather simplistic, showing off some close-ups and features these sets have to offer, and they let you know that these sets contain collectible portraits, but more on that later. Finally, on the sides, we're told that these are part of the most detailed Hogwarts castle yet, which sounds very promising. To my own shock though, one of these boxes contained paper bags. Now I knew these were gonna be a thing at some point, I was just completely caught off guard by this. Later we'll go into this aspect a bit more, but for now the other box had the regular plastic bags we're used to. I suppose let's not waste any time and put these together. Now first, the objective information starting with the Hogwarts Owlery set. It came out March 1st this year and comes with 364 pieces and retails for 45 euros, 45 dollars, 40 pounds and 70 Australian dollars. This leads to a value of about 12 cents per brick, which is not great, but we do get quite some large pieces. Therefore weight is more fair and with it weighing 285 grams, you're paying about 16 cents per gram. That is nothing too crazy. Then lastly, the set comes with three minifigures, two of which are brand new. The set is based on the owlery we see in the fourth Harry Potter film, The Goblet of Fire, and it's where Harry asks Cho Chang to go to the Yule Ball with him. We don't really see much of the actual building, but I don't think that really matters. It is just a nice tower that will go beautifully with the rest of the castle. Let's briefly look at the figures that are included. Harry and Cho both are new figures and both look fantastic. Harry has his longer hair just like in the movie and his torso prints look really nice and detailed. Both figures come with the posable short legs, which is great. Cho has a little scarf and skirt and I'm not too sure about this skirt piece, it looks kind of goofy, but overall a very good looking figure as well. And as expected, both come with a secondary expression. Then there's Argus Filch, and why this might not be a new figure, he still looks great in my opinion, especially the headpiece. It's a bummer he doesn't have leg printing though, which he did have in the past. Therefore, technically as a whole, it could be considered a new figure, but I don't think that should count. If anything, it's a downgrade. He also comes with a secondary face expression. Now onto the build itself. Building this tower was quite a lot of fun, there was plenty of variety and fun little details to put in place. A highlight would be that halfway into building the tower you actually create a sort of owl face, which later is covered up completely, but it is a really neat detail they put in which adds to the building experience. I built this pretty quickly, I spent no more than about 30 minutes. Now let's take a closer look at the set. It measures 37.5 centimeters tall, which is surprisingly tall, 10 centimeters wide and 12.2 centimeters deep, depending on its orientation. First of all, the front looks really nice and pretty clean as well. The backside is completely open and shows the interior. This is of course a snowy setting like in the movie, hence all the snowy details. Starting at the bottom, we get some nice rock formations along with a staircase leading to the first floor. On the other side, there's an archway into the tower accompanied by a little tree the design of which I absolutely love, it is super clever. Inside of here there's a spinning platform with various items on there, a little cage, premium owl treats, printed of course, a cute little owl, and water for the owls to drink. Overall there's a ton of life in this set, even besides the owls. We get a spider over here and even a little rat peeking around the corner. Moving up the tower there's a pretty cool looking owl statue in the center and some letters that of course are to be delivered by the owls. There's decent detailing inside and the exterior here is nice and clean. Each window has some space for owls to sit on and in total there's five owls in this set, so you have plenty of options there. 
All the way on top, there's yet another owl and two little lanterns. Above that is where you put your collectible portrait, and this is the one I got for this set. On the sides of the whole top area, there are some details that actually are very accurate to what we see on screen. That is pretty dope. And well, what can I say? The roof is simplistic, but works as good as it needs to. The whole thing is pretty well built. You can pick it up with force and it will keep together perfectly. So it's quite a sturdy design. There is plenty to love about this set, and I think it's overall just really nice. Later we'll go into the nitty gritty, but first let's check out the boathouse. Set 76426 also came out March 1st this year, comes with 350 pieces and retails for 38 dollars, 38 euros, 32 pounds and 70 Australian dollars. This gives you a value of more or less 11 cents per brick, slightly less than the previous one we looked at. It weighs 246 grams, so that brings you to about 15 cents per gram of Lego also slightly lower. It comes with five minifigures and three of which are brand new. This little building is based on the boathouse we see very briefly in the first Harry Potter movie. And by briefly, I mean briefly. I'm pretty sure this is all we see of it in this movie. In Deathly Hallows, we do spend some time in here as well, but it still doesn't show that much of the actual design. It is pretty hard to determine whether or not it's accurate to the real thing, but I guess that doesn't really matter anyway. Let's first take a peek at the minifigures. First off, Harry and Hermione both in their freshman outfits. Their torso prints are identical, but Hermione of course has her skirt with underneath triple molded legs that looks very good. Both have the appropriate color wand, which is a detail I really like, and their head and faces kind of speak for themselves. Hermione's hair is still just spot on, I love that, and these two obviously have secondary faces as well, those being scared this time. Next, there's Neville Longbottom and Dean Thomas, of course also in the same outfits. These are both new actually, and I, honestly I can't get over how much Neville looks like Neville, it's crazy. There isn't too much to these guys, but I think they both look decent. Their secondary faces are a bit more sad, I would say. Then finally, the highlight of this set, Professor McGonagall. What a lovely figure this is. Brand new and better than ever. She's got a hat with hair coming from underneath. That looks amazing. And there is some incredible printing here. On the arms and even on the back, all of this is crazy detailed and just looks great. I mean, what can I say? It's top notch. Her secondary face is a little annoyed, it seems. She does come with a list of students included in this set too, which is a nice detail and printed. The building experience. Building this set was a mixed experience, but not because of the actual build. The paper bags were tedious as hell, if I'm completely honest. It's very thick paper, so opening these bags feels very uncomfortable, and the fact that you don't see the bricks bothers me for some reason. Don't get me wrong, I'm totally on board with LEGO's decision to do this. It is important to be more sustainable and focus on the environment. But I can't sit here and lie, it is truly a massive Massive downgrade, in my personal opinion. Also, the booklet has one of those hard edges, resulting in the pages constantly flipping back. It is very frustrating. <laughs> Anyways, besides all that, the build itself was really fun. Lots of variety, just really nice. On this one, I also spent about half an hour in total. Then the boathouse itself. It is quite a small building, measuring 21 and a half centimeters high, 15 centimeters wide, and 12 centimeters deep. Now let's take a closer look, because there's quite a lot to it for such a small set. Overall, I gotta say, what a fun little building. It's got nice shaping, a ton of colorful details, it's just a lot of fun. They use dark blue and transparent pieces to replicate the water and that works very well. The whole bottom side is packed with details like this fish and those two little mushrooms. I do think the fish looks kind of goofy, but that's alright. There's another one of those small pine trees on the left side with a spider hiding behind it. And on the right, we've got Hedwig sitting on a little fence, a crab chilling in the water, and even Trevor the toad hiding inside the rocks. Once again, a ton of life over here. Five different animals in such a small build is very nice to see. On top of this base is the building itself, utilizing some archway type structures. On the front, there are some little candles and the roof and walls are covered with some plants. On top of the whole thing is a smaller tower, inside of which is another collectible portrait. This time I got this one. It's a pretty simple but solid little building if you ask me. The set also comes with two wooden boats. It's a super simple design, but they look nice and have lanterns on the front to lead the way. Just like we see in the movie. You can shove one of these boats inside the boathouse, which is kind of the whole point, and the pedals can be stored on either side of the walls. That's actually pretty accurate too. You can see this in the background of a scene in Deathly Hallows. On the back of the building, there are two clips, which I assume will connect to the other future Hogwarts sets. 
The building as a whole technically is fairly strong, but if you pick it up without thinking, the portrait might yeet out this tower and the paddles and the frog bit could potentially fall off because it's connected with the clip to a different hinge kind of piece. Not that it matters, but it's a thing that can happen. So, well, there you have the two first new Hogwarts Lego sets. I really quite like them, but I do have some final thoughts. Starting with the Owlery, it works quite well as a standalone set, but at the same time, it's unfortunate that it's only half a tower instead of a full one that can open up or something. I obviously don't know what plans Lego have for this castle, and in general, I understand why it's the way it is. These sets always have been open at the back, so there's plenty of room for play. As a collector, of course, this isn't an important factor, but still, it looks nice from the front, and on its own, it works fine as a display as well. Then also, the Owlery, even though it has only 14 more pieces, is notably bigger. Of course, there's a ton of large pieces, so it makes sense. I suppose this does justify the pricing as well. One set might have more figures and features, but seems a lot smaller as a whole, while the other has just three figures, but a pretty darn tall building. It just feels like much more stuff. Also, neither of these sets have a single sticker. Everything is printed, which is fantastic. I cannot stress that enough. Bros! And guns! First, the Owlery. I'll say it's a nice and clean tower design with plenty of detail to enjoy. And in general, you get a ton of cool and unique pieces, like those owls, some printed stuff, all of that is very cool. And even though it's part of a bigger castle, it still works well as a standalone set, and this goes for both these sets, to be completely honest. For cons, the only thing I got is it's half a tower. Uh, <laughs> do with that what you will, I guess. <laughs> then the boathouse, same thing here, it's just a very nice, cute looking building. All the details and elements make for great playability, and the minifigures can't be overlooked, especially McGonagall, literally perfect. As for cons, uh, I genuinely don't really have something I think is bad about this set, which sounds stupid, but I can't lie either, it is quite solid for what it is. The price maybe could be a thing, $38 feels like a relatively large amount of money for what you get, but I don't know, that's for you to decide. I am very curious what the future of these Hogwarts sets hold. If if the quality stays on par with these, I think we're gonna be in for a treat. I'm excited to step into Harry Potter in general, uh, as you could probably tell from the editing of this video, I put a ton of effort into this. But yes, I think good things are coming. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more similar things, maybe check out this video on screen right now. Like this video, subscribe, and then I guess I will see you in the next one.